There were strawberries actually growing in the wood in the two by fours, which is pretty cool. It tells me that strawberries can grow in pure wood mulch. Pure wood mulch, which is a very interesting thing. Strawberries are growing purely in wood, quite happily so. And I just removed a bunch of them. There's another one. And they're bearing a lot of fruit. I'll show you over here. Now these are the strawberries I took out of the 2x4s. Uh, where are they? They actually have berries forming here. So um, there's a bunch of berries forming already. And these are going to be smallish, but they're so sweet. So hopefully they'll, they'll take up residence here and be happy. Now we've got domesticated strawberries that Melanie is transplanting. These are ones that I had planted a couple years ago, and they're, they have spread throughout the garden, but the garden was taken over with weeds and junk. So she's transplanting them here to the rock bed on the back side of the rock garden. And we'll nurture them here and let them take over this whole entire area, which they will eventually do. Because this is mostly uh, wood mulch and compost. Um, here's a couple that had shallow roots that I had pulled off the tarp itself. They had actually grown on the tarp. And then here's some. So these were all fresh growth from this year, some of these. There are a lot of them. Melanie's got a container full right there. And she's taking in earth balls with them, so they'll definitely uh, be okay. And then we have a lot of vegetables out here. I want to remove all the wood and everything from out of here now. Look, these are all strawberries growing in the wood. That's wild strawberries, and these are even tinier fruit than the ones with the white flowers. So we're going to take all that, and we're taking, we've found lettuce. There's uh, lettuce growing in here, okay, from last year. So we're going to take these and transplant them, and then we'll have our lettuce this year. So there's a whole mess of them, and we're going to empty all of our herbs and all of our vegetables that are growing of their own from out here, so I can till the rest of this garden. Now over here, um, there's a couple sets of herbs I've got to remove, and then we can till this strip all through up to here somewhere. Here. Here's a bunch of vegetables that are coming up from last year from seed, which we're going to keep and transplant. So I'm going to keep as many as I can from these and, uh, and plant these in our tilled area. There's another nice one right there. Very nice one. So we'll keep these and transplant them. And those are the, I think they're rutabaga, but the leaves are amazing eating. Very, very good food. And then uh, there's some intermingled here throughout. Here's some that grew up from seed from last year. I think that's actually a, that might be a radish. What do you got? Oh, she's got catnip. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. We got so much going on. Um, not really going to record too much action because we're just uprooting uh, plants. Moving the last of the plants over here. I have dug out all of the herbs that I had planted in the garden over there and moved them over to the rock beds. So I'm going to show you what we deal with here. It's taken us the entire day to move my herbs because if you want to plant something in this property anywhere, if you want to dig any hole, and this is another reason why I can't dig very well, you have to deal with rocks. Like this. So it's quite a task to dig any holes in this property at all. Okay, I finished transplanting everything. I've got um, the Echinacea, or whatever you want to call it. Melanie moved them. I've got sage growing from last year on its own. And we've got a potted flower that Melanie put out here. I've got pansies growing on their own. I just moved some, I think that's lemon balm, over here. And 
We've got cat uh, peppermint spreading out everywhere here. Really, really, really spreading out. And I'm going to transplant a lot of them. They spread out all over. Boy, when people say peppermint goes wild and takes over, boy, it does. I started with a little potted plant, a tiny little potted plant right there last year. And now, this year, already, it's out to here. And it's over to here. And it's out to here. That was one little tiny potted plant. So I'm going to transplant a lot of that out of here. And then over here in this bed, Melanie transplanted all of the strawberries that she could find. Because I had purchased a couple strawberry plants last year and they multiplied. I love that fact that they multiply so well. So we'll let them dominate this whole area here behind the rock bed. And two that I don't know are going to live. And then here, I had showed you them before, got a few more. And now we've got sage that I had last year that's growing and sage from two years ago that I just transplanted today. So we've got two types of sage. And then I just transplanted my favorite hot and spicy oregano and then another normal oregano. So I've got two oreganos. I've got chamomile starting to grow back. And then I've transplanted uh, thyme and golden lemon thyme. I love the smell and taste of that. And I, what else was it I cut in half? Oh yeah, Melanie transplanted some pepper, uh, catnip, another strawberry for some reason over here, and some more pepper, uh, catnip. We're going to put all the catnip over here. And then there's a few more plants to transplant. I took the low catmint and cut it into half and put the two plants over here. And over here we have a version of Russian sage, which I love the smell of so much. We have basil from Walmart that uh, wasn't doing well in the house, so we brought it out here. Rosemary from Walmart that got um, powdery mildew, so we brought it out here. And then another um, uh, um, 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 lemon balm. So everything's out of the garden that uh, all the herbs are out of the garden and around the rock beds so this is going to be pretty and uh, we're cleaning it up so now the garden has um, a lot of food that we're still transplanting there's a lot of strawberries I want to still save and this was a flowery thing but it really spread out so I'm going to have a problem saving that and you can see the holes from where I pulled out all my herbs. And then um, here was woolly yarrow and another type of yarrow that um, actually, I think, I'm not sure anymore what's what. I want to see, I don't know if that's a weed or a plant. Oh, hold on. And that's a fuzzy wuzzy I'm going to have to transplant. Um, I don't know where we're going to put it. But I think. I don't know if these are weeds or herbs. I don't know now. And then there was something there. There was yarrow here. Two types of yarrow, but I can't find it um, in the midst of all the uh, sorrel. The sorrel has literally taken over. So, anyway. And then there's all our lettuce, which I talked about earlier, and all of our other plants. Melanie cleaned up this here while I was transplanting everything else, so now I can tell it all. So we're getting there. But that's it for today, everybody. Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. Gardening. Morning, everybody. Troy and Melanie from the mm -hmm. do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. Melanie is making little waffles, corn-looking waffles. She's got the whole kitchen taken up to do this job. And she's got these cute little corn-shaped... It's really neat how they're turning out. They're fun to eat, too. Oh, it's a little corn. Yeah, it looks just like little corn cubs. Cute little corn-shaped waffles. Uh, it's a pretty neat idea. We got these at a, uh, this form at a garage sale the other day, along with a whole box full of other cast iron stuff for only $5. And she was anxious to use it, because it's fun. She's having a fun time cooking with it. So, we're enjoying fun breakfast today. <laughs> 